Yo, welcome back. It's new comic book day. We back at it. Uh, fresh off my vacation last week, as you can tell from my beautiful sun-kissed skin. Anyways, I got two DC, four Marvel, two independent for you this week. Let's get right into it. All right, to kick it off, we got the Flash 790. Super excited. I've really been enjoying the Flash since I picked it up. I'm excited for this whole one minute war arc. Um, as you can see, this beautiful cover A by Torn Clark, but this one minute war arc is the real beautiful thing about this. I think it's really cool. We get an alien speedster race coming in and we're gonna have a whole Flash family war with them in the course of a minute. And I think that's a cool concept because yeah, speedsters, they do things quick, things happen before people know it. And I'm excited to get into this and dive in and see what this one minute war is all about. Uh, if I've been enjoying the Flash, I'm not sold on all of the Flash family members just yet. I haven't had a lot with them, but I did enjoy the last issue with the focus on the Pied Piper. I thought that was really cool. I have some old Flash comics and I actually have a few with the Pied Piper in them. So that was kind of neat to kind of see the old world and the new world come together. But either way, I'm excited for this issue. All right, to keep it rolling with DC, we got Lazarus Planet One Alpha. Uh, the kickoff to the Lazarus, I can't say that word, Lazarus Planet event that I guess we're going to get to start off this new dawn of DC. So good for a little teaser to see what's to come, whether it's going to be important, whether we're going to like it or not, I don't know. But I got this beautiful 1 in 25, this John Gang cover. Uh, more love to Cyborg. Come on, let's go. He's an underutilized member of the Justice League, I think. I, you know, Let's see a little bit more what old Vic has in store for us. But really cool cover. I'm a big mech guy. I was a Gundam guy growing up. So this cover just speaks to me. It speaks to my inner Toonami enjoyer. So anyway, I'm excited to see what this whole story arc and this is going to be about. I don't know if it's going to be its own self-contained thing. I'm sure it will be a crossover among all their new books because then we'll buy more books, I guess. But, uh, you know, whatever about that. But I am excited to see what's going to go on in this. So eh, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what's going on. All right, Webheads, we come into Marvel now. ASM 17, got the Spider-Man No More homage variant by John Romita Jr. Pretty good cover, I like the cover, good throwback with it. Um, I have been enjoying the Dark Web event as far as in the ASM run goes. I think a lot of the tie-ins seem to be unnecessary or I just don't care about it. I'm actually gonna drop the X-Men Dark Web tie-in because I don't know, I got a little taste of Krakoa and I think I know why people don't like it. And I also don't really, I just don't vibe with it. But the ASM run, I think is really good. Last time Spidey left off, you know, we fought Venom, we picked up with Madeline Pryor, or we picked up with Chasm and had that fight. And now Spidey gets thrust into limbo. So it'll be cool to see what challenges are in store for Spidey when we get down there. Uh, it looks like Peter's gonna have to start dealing with things as he is in his work, which is his own personal hell, it seems like. I feel that. But <laughs> I'm I'm enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this run. I think the Dark Web, again, the Dark Web tie-ins, I could take it or leave it. I don't know if I'm gonna continue Gold Goblin either. It just seems like I like to, I want Norman to, I guess, end up back as the Green Goblin one day, but I just don't feel like there's enough in these Gold Goblin books that I'm gonna pick it up and keep going. So, but I am enjoying the main run and I think that's what's important. The, you know, the art's been better. I haven't, since it hasn't been John Romita Jr. in the interior artwork, I've thought that that's added a lot to it. I think Spidey looks best in kind of that traditional comic art as opposed to the fat faces and weird noses and odd looking people creatures that John Romita Jr. draws. Even though he does draw Spider-Man really well, his Peter isn't very good. What? More webhead stuff. Miles Morales, Spider-Man, issue two. I really enjoyed issue one. I'm a big Miles guy. Got this beautiful Baldari graffiti cover. It's looking good. Very into the Spider-Versey, which is an, a great point of reference for Miles to lean into. Not that I want a lot of multiversal stuff. I kind of like just some ground level Miles for a little bit, which it seems like is what we're getting. I guess we'll continue our 
struggles with Scorpion and this new villain that seems to know who Miles is. So we'll see if they make any moves in this. I appreciate where this series is going. I also appreciate it that it was, it was a good jumping on point for any new readers for Miles because it really had a good, you know, issue one started kind of its own thing. We got a good little exposition of Miles. We got some family interaction. I like that his family knows that he is Spider-Man, which is really neat. So I am excited to see where this goes. If I had to make my predictions, look into my crystal ball, I have a feeling that probably the end of this issue, Miles will trade blows with this new villain that we're approaching and building up to, or maybe something bad happens at the end. Oh, shocker, leave it at a cliffhanger, right? But yeah, man, this cover's beautiful. The interior art looks great. I love Miles. Let's see some Spider-Man. Let's see some action. Let's see some shocking. Let's see it. So yeah, Miles Morales Spider-Man number two. If you haven't jumped on yet, get it. I know this is from last week, but I was in the Bahamas on a beach last week, so I didn't have time to go get my Fantastic Four number three. But here it is, Fantastic Four number three, the Alex Ross thing cover, really beautiful cover. I like the charcoal look, the very bland. It doesn't have to pop because of the flat white background. It's a really cool cover, I think. But either way, I think that this issue is going to focus on Johnny Blaze. I haven't seen any spoilers yet. Um, and next issue, issue four, the whole grant, the gang will get back together. We'll have all one, two, three, four of the Fantastic Four. So that's exciting. I like, I do kind of like the slow burn. The last story issue with uh, Reed and Sue was pretty good. How they uh, followed the Doom bots. And I like that it gave almost a little bit of depth to Doom's character in it. What it seemed to do more than build up Sue and uh, Reed because how, you know, how Doom was helped out by this old lady and she he made the Doom bots with their purpose to give her a good and easy life. And man, that's really cool to see another side of a big major villain like this. So I look forward to seeing what Johnny Storm's been up to and how are we going to pull all of our crew back together in the next issue. So last issue is set up. So really looking forward to issue four of this series and this run. So hopefully it's good. I've been really enjoying it so far. Again, I like the lo-fi, low action elements of this. It doesn't, everything doesn't have to be, you know, universal traveling, transversing wildness. I think that these smaller intimate stories are actually really fun and enjoyable for me. So I look forward to this. Let's, let's keep this going. Avengers 100 years of Disney cover not reading the Avengers don't care to read this book but I am a huge Disney fan so I think I'm gonna end up collecting all of these Disney covers that they start coming out with I love it I love Mickey in here and I like that they got Daisy as She-Hulk and man this this cover is just awesome I think as a Disney fan I just, just makes me smile and giddy. So I look forward to collecting all these covers. And while that Avengers cover is independently awesome, these last two independent books are equally as awesome, especially Specs. This is issue three. Issues one and two were really, really good. If you're not reading this, really pushing you that you should be consuming this because this is a good series. The last series, we kind of begun to see the fallout of what it's like to have these magic specs. And, you know, we saw in the first issue, they made that one mistake of wishing the bully away. And now we're kind of, we, that second issue was the fallout to that decision. And I do appreciate that this book is kind of tackling some smaller issues, such as the racism in this small town um, for the time period. And just, you know, small town, I grew up in small town, Southern, Indiana and you know, it's uh, it was questionable at times nothing overt all the time I guess but that's my experience. So take that with a grain of salt so, But I do appreciate the social commentary that they sprinkle on the bottom. It's not in your face It's not it doesn't feel like it's forced or they go out of their way to make these points It feels very natural within the bounds of this story and we see that what happens when another wish of the glasses kind of goes awry as he wishes his friend to be able to get out of this town. 
so he's probably off to maybe prison. I don't know where they're gonna go from here. There's a lot of questions to answer and be asked in this. Uh, I look forward to reading issue number three. Again, Specs, this is a really good series that I highly recommend. So go check this out if you haven't got it out yet. So yeah, awesome, 10 out of 10. Let's round out the day. 10,000 Black Feathers, issue five. And this is the finale. And this series has been good, honestly, not a lot. I mean, things happened through the first four issues and it was an enjoyable read because I think Jeff Lemire's just done such a great job writing it and doing this book. Not a lot really necessarily happened. Now issue four, things started to escalate a little bit as some thing was murdering people in the police station and then there was that kind of weird naked dude that was murdering people and then there was like the plague doctor thing in there um, and then we finally got I think I commented on this a few issues ago where we would eventually land our main character in their D&D &D world that they created as a child she went to the basement she had to follow the thing through the thing and I look forward to seeing how this concludes again this is my first series run whatever you want to call it um in this black or orchard mythos and i really enjoyed it i might have to go look for some trades on the other ones just to kind of round out this world a little bit i appreciate it that it's kind of a a little bit of lo-fi horror a slow burn up until what we'll see is the finale um i honestly don't know where this is gonna go i wonder if she meets her friend again and i wonder if her friend is the thing that's been killing people or I don't know. I don't know how we're going to wrap this up. Again, this is really cool. Almost a little bit of, I don't want to call it cosmic horror because that's not it, but it's that lo-fi, earthy, you know, what is this God that has been pulling me around and now is murdering people and luring me into this realm and all that. So a little, a little Lovecrafty, and I'm a big Lovecraft guy. So I look forward to seeing where the rest of this goes. Like I said, I'm going to pick up some trades for the other series in this Black Orchard mythos. And I'm gonna check more out because this series has got me hooked into it. If you like those other ones, you should have checked out this one, I would assume. If not, this is a fun five issue read that you should look at. But, so yeah, we'll wrap this one up. Well, hey, that's all I got for you today. This is just the Amazing Spider-Man 374. Has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, just to pad the space a little bit. But I appreciate you if you've stuck around all this time and watched this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love for you to comment, like, subscribe. I love the support that I have been getting uh, on this channel. And uh, let me know what you got. I'll be, you know, looking in the community to see what other people got. Uh, if I'm not as active, I apologize. I've uh, be re begun nursing school, so I'm back in school right now. So my time is just crunched a little bit, but that's okay. I'll definitely still uh, make sure I do my comic haul videos. And I'd like to, again, try to do a little bit more because I do want to add some value back into this community. So yeah, um, let me know in the comments what you guys think, what you're picking up. And uh, happy new comic book day. I'll see you in the next one.